Who's wrong and who's wronger? In this corner, followed by Millions James, the exploding unicorn, Breakwell. And in that corner, ignored by Millions, Steve Dodge, Rinko Levi. Hey everybody, welcome back to Wrong and Wronger. I could not be more delighted to hit the record button, except it did prompt James Breakwell to say the haunting line, I've got to position myself before we can start. I don't know if I'm going to get that one out of my memory, but fortunately I can't see him like you can. But I am the better looking of the two of us, despite all the comments, because there are just angry, angry people in the world on Twitter and on YouTube. He is James the newly positioned and hopefully fresh smelling break well and james how are you doing today man well, now i'm disturbed you just take everything in the wrong direction i merely wanted to you know position myself in the center of the screen so that the audience might better appreciate my beauty now that we have oh, a oh. listener in kenya i didn't want to scare everybody away you know we're kind of in the big time oh. now and uh no 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 we don't just have one listener james we are number 102 in the narrow health and fitness category in the country of Kenya. Wow. <laughs> there are only 101 health and wellness podcasts in Kenya that are more popular than ours. I'm going to get a big head over I this. Know. Wow. Can you believe what that? an ego trip. <laughs> I mean, we're number two in Uganda, but number 102 in Kenya. So I don't know what the disparity is based upon, but it it's it, it makes me feel like we have an international crowd. We should have a challenge someday to see if we can even find these places on a map. I think I could get Kenya, probably. I'm not positive I could get Uganda. I can get the right general area, but if there were no names on the map, I might struggle a bit. We also have uh, a correspondent in the great country of India who has been talking us up on my Twitter feed, and I believe you've been tagged in on it too. I was going to write his name down and uh, forgot. <laughs> and then I, I thought today I was going to go back and see if I took a screenshot of one of his comments so I'd have his name. And apparently I forgot to do that too. So we do have an Indian correspondent, James. We are an international, a global pod. India is a crazy market. I mean, there's like a billion people over there one time early on yeah. in this whole viral twitter thing they ran a article about me and my kids and uh it's like okay this is a newspaper i've never heard of and they put like a half page picture of us out there and i looked the, up the paper and it had a subscription of like four hundred thousand, which if that were in the u.s would be like the second largest paper in the country like it's just <laughs> it's just insane i've never even heard of this thing before there so I, I do have a few fans over there so i can only assume that's why this person is following us both that you are once again hanging on my coattails as you are wont to do oh man of those billion people we got one of them <laughs> so we got a little bit of work to do but our sleeves are rolled up because the weather's getting nicer it is springtime and james what are we going to talk about today let's forget all about us and talk about the fans because we're givers out of nowhere you actually came up with a decent idea here which was shocking for me and pains me to admit what? but it was at what temperature do you start wearing shorts this question is near and dear to my heart because it's strange observing habits in the north versus habits in the south and then my son blows all of that out of the water he was angry when he went up north to go to school this year because after november 1st the kids have to wear slacks <laughs> to school they don't allow them to wear shorts he has worn shorts year round for most of his entire life he has literally never owned a pair of blue jeans so He's kind of an anomaly, but him aside, in Wisconsin, man, the first 32 and a half degree day, the convertible tops are down, folks are out on their motorcycles, shorts galore, like it's almost like it's, it's beach and bikini season. Here in the South, man, it's going to be 70 today. And still, when I walked into the gas station to get my coffee, there's people bundled up. There's jackets that are being placed on. There's the uh, the yoga pants at the park as women are kind of bundling up to go for a walk. And I'm like, what's wrong with you people? 
What is it like in Indianapolis, James? It's going to get up to the 60s today. I don't know that it's quite shorts weather, but I had a roommate in college who was like your son, but I think he went a step further. He would not even wear a coat. All winter long, oh, he wore jean shorts and a gray shirt. And it was the same gray t-shirt. What? It was the same jean shorts and gray t-shirt. Like he had multiple versions of the same thing. And he was short and he was hairy and maybe that protected him a little bit. There was, I used to have uh, oh 6 a.m. or 6.30 practice for cross country and we'd go and bundle up and run and it was stupid and we were freezing. I remember I came back from that and I saw him <laughs> walking back from the cafeteria before 7 a.m. It's still dark. There's six inches of snow on the ground. I mean, it must've been below zero. And I looked at him and he had his hands in his pockets. And that was the only indication oh. I ever saw that he even experienced heat or cold. <laughs> the rest of the time, hands not in the pockets, shorts, t-shirt, year round. And uh, I just, I, 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 it had to cause him pain. It had to at some level. I think at some point he became identified as the guy who wore those things and he was just always gonna wear them. And uh, it's really shocking he didn't die of hypothermia, but that's college for you. You can survive anything. Did, was that just his thing? Like, what was this some kind of protest? What did you ask him? What his problem was? Well, people did ask him, and the more they asked him about it, the more he just kept doing it. I mean, he he wore he was like a cartoon <laughs> character. He wore literally the same outfit every single day. And when I say roommate, I guess I, I was he was more of a neighbor. So we we had these two room suites, and they each had an external door, but they were supposed to one of those doors was supposed to be locked, and then the two rooms were conjoined in the middle, and you're supposed to have like a bedroom and a living room or something like that. They, they wanted you to be social. And I found out yeah. if you took an Allen wrench, you could pop open that other door and you could have two <laughs> single units and never see your roommate. And that's what I did three years in a row. It was amazing. The Allen wrench that you pounded into the crack between the door and the jam it, so that even if the handle worked, they could, they'd have to throw their shoulder it, it into it. It wasn't even like, it wasn't even protected. It just took a standard, you know, just a standard Allen wrench. And usually if you wanted a private room, you had to pay like an extra thousand or two thousand dollars, whatever it was, because college yeah. gouges you for everything. And for literally free, with an Allen wrench I got from my parents, I got that door open. <laughs> Maybe this is like some kind of intelligence test from the college. If, you, if you're smart enough to figure this out and save two thousand dollars you can go ahead and have your degree did uh, just to close the anecdote did you ever see girls going in or out of harry guy's dorm room here is the craziest part i so oh, no. he no not in college absolutely not girls would not be within 100 feet of him oh. obviously he, oh, he okay. also i mean he's a great guy and there's a, there's a zero percent chance that he'll re listen to this so i guess i don't have to be super nice but he uh, he played the french horn he was Kenya, he was in right. band he wasn't like on he wasn't like some you know super macho athlete or anything but he uh, after college out of nowhere uh, i invited him over to my house to play halo we were just kind of you know we, friends scatter after college we were pretty desperate for people and he came like two or three hours to come down here and play and he brought a girl with him and we were shocked just stunned <laughs> and out of nowhere we'd never seen him with a girl before and then as we were eating uh my wife was pregnant at the time which happens you know quite a bit in my life and uh, we were eating <laughs> yeah. we were eating food and uh and this guy's girlfriend goes well if your wife's eating the lunch meat i guess i can as well and we looked at her and we're like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> so is this, it was, she was, she was pregnant. He came, he showed up with a girl for the first time ever and she was pregnant. He has two kids now and he's a truck driver. It's was crazy. It his? his life took, did, it was a music. Did he have hairy kids? Well, I, I could not, I cannot vouch for their hairiness, but he went from this guy <laughs> who wore shorts and a t-shirt and played mute, you played the French horn as a major, which who decides to do that? What's the, what's the career track of that? Now he's a trucker, drives this <laughs> giant big rig, has a wife and two kids. And he might've been the, he might've been one of the first people I knew who got married. It, it was, so anyway, life takes you crazy places. I can only assume he achieved that level of success and stability because of the shorts and t-shirt. And because he knew you, don't rule yourself out of this equation. I had zero part in that match. <laughs> I, did, I did not. <laughs> I, I, I would like to believe he name dropped me, though. I'm sure. I'm sure that's what brought her over there in the first place. Because unlike you, he thinks I am an, act, an actual celebrity. No, he he does not. That that, that was a lie. <laughs> yeah, that was a lie. What? He does not at all. What? You're hanging in my office with all the other celebrity pictures, James. Oh, I am in the same. I, I am the only one in your bathroom, and the fact that your professional <laughs> clients go in there and see that does fill me with joy. And also, you got it, it framed. It is a conversation starter. I thought, I thought you wouldn't even take it out of the tube. You got it framed. I mean, that's the biggest compliment of yeah. all. 
Yeah. No, I don't want that thing to get ruined <laughs> with people that have bad aim, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I needed to waterproof it. So what is your line for wearing shorts? Um, I... There was a time where I wore shorts a lot, but as I get older and creakier, I find that I'm less apt to wear shorts outside. Even now when I'm going walking, like uh, I've worn them a couple times already this spring, but have immediately regretted it. Well, actually, it's an immediate regret, and then you get kind of warmed up and you're okay. And by you, I mean me. But I don't know. It's got to be pretty warm out before I leave the house wearing shorts. I would much prefer wearing blue jeans than shorts until it gets around probably room temperature, 72 and above. Then I'll probably don the shorts. But under 72, I'm going with pants. You know, it's a, it, this reminds me that Nashville is quite a bit warmer than Indianapolis right now, which reminds me further that I actually did have a topic for this week and I forgot about it. Uh, we were looking for a vacation to go to when the kids were on spring break coming up here, and I asked about Nashville, oh, yes. and you threw your own city under the bus. You would not vouch for it, and now we definitely <laughs> are not coming to Nashville. That's going to have to be our topic next week if, if either of us remembers, which we definitely won't. Uh, but I, uh, I tend to be seasonal. You, wait a minute, you wouldn't have texted me in the first place unless you had some doubt over your decision to think about Nashville. Have you met me? I am filled with doubt. I am nothing but doubt. But in the end, <laughs> you, you saved me quite a bit of money because we would have gone down there. We would have had to have gotten an Airbnb and then everything in Nashville costs a lot of money and there were only like two or three things to do. So and instead, we're going to an indoor water park that's only two hours away. And so it, it worked out okay by you poo-pooing your own city, you helped my bank account. So I guess you did me a favor uh, and insulted all of our listeners in Nashville, of whom there are none. I did mention that the loud guy who laughs a lot is in Nashville, and that's a bonus that no other city can boast. So that, that remark clearly hurts you more than I anticipated. <laughs> it, was, it was just my <laughs> wife trying to describe who you were. I don't know how you would describe yourself to a small child. But uh, awesome. that was what she came up with. Cool. Let me just say, there were a lot of other yeah. less flattering descriptions that I would have given. So just be grateful <laughs> it was her yeah. describing oh, without you. Without a doubt. And not, and not me. <laughs> uh, but once I, start, uh, once I start wearing shorts, I tend to not stop, regardless of temperature, until, until the fall. So at some point, I am going to transition here in, the, uh, in May or so or late April. When it gets, you know... 65 or so, I would say I switch out, but it's weird because inside the house where I spend 99% of my time, it is 71 degrees year round. And sitting here at my desk talking to you half the time, I'm in pants and a sweater and I'm just freezing all winter long. Mm. And then somehow in May, 71 degrees feels great and I wear shorts. So why do I not wear shorts year round inside and then just throw on some, you know, those snap up windbreakers or something if I have to go outside for some reason. I don't know. I can't explain it. It's psychological, but somehow if it's 90 degrees outside, 71 inside feels amazing. And if it's 10 degrees outside, 71 still feels freezing. Have I been to your house two times or three times? I think we had this conversation I think you've once, been here three times. Could I could be wrong. If I'm not mistaken, was I, I don't think I've been there in the summer months, just knowing what my tour schedule is. The one time where you and I had to walk to get pizza, I know you wore pants because it was freaking <laughs> freezing outside. And we had to walk because apparently, I don't know, like James Breakwell does not take internal combustion engine type it was of transportation around. Literally his town. a block away. I mean, we had to go down and over, but it was we were rotated around one block. I was I was showing you the easy walkability of my city and also getting you away from my family for a brief time because after a few minutes they needed a break already. <laughs> I was overwhelming them with my laughter and my volume. <laughs> But I believe the other two times you were wearing shorts because I remember saying something to you about it afterwards, that it was chilly and you were still a shorts guy. Yeah, I think, and it's just habit and it's laziness because once you get into that shorts drawer, if you switch to pants, you're admitting defeat. You've, admi <laughs> you've admitted that the winter has won, it's come here and it's changed your behavior. So I do typically <laughs> wear shorts pretty far into the fall, especially since I'm kind of a sweaty guy and I overheat. So if I'm cold to start out with, I just assume if I have to move it at 
all any level of physical exertion, <laughs> I'll warm up. And I, I think that's kind of where I go with it. Also, I've got hairy legs. So that's like if any part of me is going to get cold, it's not going to be from the knee down. Like that's that's pretty solid. It's going to be the upper body that starts freezing first. <laughs> James has hair all the way down his back. I mean, <laughs> not on his head, just down his back. But uh, since you've lost the weight, has that affected your body temperature, your thermostat? Honestly, I feel cold all the time. <laughs> I don't know if that's related so, or not. So, yes. It probably Wait, is. Wait, did you before? I'm not sure what you're saying. I feel cold all the time now. I did not feel cold all the time previously. So that the, Okay, so you lost your insulation. That very well could be. Uh, but, I mean, it's the weight's been off for like two years now. I don't know. I just This winter I felt especially cold. But this is the first winter I've ever spent entirely in my house. I used to go and work in an office, and there, 71 degrees for some reason felt hot. And then I, would, I wouldn't layer up. So uh, my only conclusion is that the thermostats lie, and 71 degrees is not really 71 degrees. They just put it there as a placebo and then set the temperature at whatever real, you know, real amount they want behind the scenes. I was just thinking, I don't know that our thermostat changes a whole lot, but it sure feels hotter in the summer and colder in the winter, despite the number yes. being the same on the wall. It is it, it is a mystery how that works, unless it's like... Which is funny, because when I go to a hotel, I always set the thermostat to 65, <laughs> and I've been in hundreds of hotels, and uh, my wife hates traveling with me because she would much rather set it higher than that. Because she's like you. you. You guys have no body fat, so she's always cold. And I'm always hot. I'd rather have it cool when I'm asleep. But, uh, yeah, at our house uh, right now in the winter, she sets it at 62 because doesn't want to pay for heat. Wow. And it seems just fine to me. Yeah. 62? In the summertime, she'll probably set it to 90. 62? That's like frost crystals forming. Holy cow. <laughs> I find it to be... Fantastic. So 65 at, at a uh, hotel is actually a treat for you. It's the first time you can move your fingers without experiencing frostbite. No, this, well, because <laughs> as I've said to you many times, James, I've never been more busy but have less money than <laughs> I've been this past year. So this is a kind of a new leaf for Mrs. Steve as she's trying to conserve money. I gotcha. Well, we, uh, we burn money indiscriminately here on certain things like heat, <laughs> which keeps us alive. Actually, our thermo... So I, and I didn't finish this story fully in the newsletter. I don't know if you read this one this week, oh. but when I, my pig escaped, it was because the HVAC guys were here again. And for two or three years oh. now, they couldn't figure out why our furnace just quit when it was cold, which is the one time you want your furnace. Like when it, <laughs> I did not read that this week. It was, right. But anyway, but like it was fine if it was in the 30s or 20s, but if it would drop into like the teens, all of a sudden the furnace was just working too hard and it would wow. give up and that's like holy cow that's like <laughs> dangerously cold and now we have no heat and we had people keep coming out and coming out and looking at it and they tweaked this or that and finally this last time this guy told us he's like basically they built your furnace wrong it needs to have another giant duct going in it to to get more airflow there so it doesn't overheat when it has to work hard and that's what we finally did oh. so now there's a giant obnoxious pipe going into it uh, and in theory, it's actually going to work all winter long. Of course, we got this, you know, in March when it's starting to warm up. So we get to wait a full year to find out if it actually worked or not. So we will we will see. But if that holds steady, I guess in the house stays 71 degrees, maybe I can transition to being a shorts in the house all the time kind of guy, which would not be a bad lifestyle. So would your furnace just kick off and then kick on again later? Or would it completely wave the white flag and you got to call the guy? It would pop up with an error code. It would basically say it overheated. And we found out over time that you could get it to go again. If it was like a computer. You had to turn it off and turn it back on. So like every two hours, you had to go downstairs oh, and preemptively turn it off and turn it back on, which is not super pleasant <laughs> in the middle of the, a, a cold winter night. But it did keep us from dying. So that was... That was our solution when things got really bad. Wow. So as long as it was warm outside, your furnace worked exactly. perfectly well. Yes. If you didn't need it, it was there for you. But if you actually like needed it for like safety reasons, yeah, it noped out of there. Wow. Your house, man. 
I you you're built on an Indian burial ground or something. Like that furnace was there when you moved in. No, right? we we installed this furnace, but we installed it like oh, eight years ago. No. It was way past when anybody would come out and fix it for free, unfortunately, which is usually when you find the problems. We also, I mean, the house was built before insulation existed, and people just you know added another light, you know nine layers of clothing if they didn't want to freeze to death <laughs> overnight. So it's big and drafty. We've got these ten foot ceilings, which are awesome until you try to heat the house, and then the heat is you know warming up your light fixtures and nothing else and we just accepted it for what it is it's like yeah you know our, our our heating bill every winter is going to be the cost of another car and that's okay we're just we're gonna be warm that was our decision we're going to survive the winter whatever it costs and uh, we're still here so i think that strategy worked wow all right all right yeah i i would be the first one sacrificed if somebody had to go in this house so i'm glad that our furnace has kept up this year yeah, that, well, you've got like 10,000 square feet to heat. I mean, that's like, you need you need a system of fireplaces and burn barrels to get that going. Well, you've got two units for your house, don't you? Well, we do, but it's not, so, so there's one unit that covers 90% of the house. And then we finished our attic and that has, that technically right. has a separate unit, but it's just, it's one of those ones that goes above the door. I don't know. If, oh, I don't know if those that like uh, in a hotel room. Almost. Yeah, it's like that. And I guess I'm familiar with your hotel room heating and cooling habits because half the time when I recorded <laughs> with you when you were on the road, you would turn those things up on full blast, and then we wonder why the audio was terrible. <laughs> like, why is why is Steve recording in a hurricane? I run, you know, the thing about hotels is even in the dead of winter, the hotel rooms get hot because they're all they're sealed from the outside, and there's a million people in that mm. building. And so when we would record, if we'd record for 15 or 20 minutes, like it was hot in that room when we were done. And I resented you, James Breakwell, for being able to hear. So I had to turn off that thing. I find it curious that you set the temperature to exactly 65. Because I really think that uh, hotel rooms only have two temperatures, freezing and baking. And there's nothing in between. If you turn on that air conditioner, it's going to drop the temperature until you see, you know, icicles form on your nose. And oh, you turn it off. And in yeah. 30 seconds, it'll be 90 degrees. And that's always my struggle. That, I always end up turning it on and turning it off several times during the night, which is just one of many, many reasons I absolutely hate hotels and would not trade lives with you for <laughs> anything. Well, I haven't. When I called a basketball game in Louisville Saturday, that was the first time I've been out of the state in exactly one year. This week, it's a year oh, wow. since I've been on the road. And uh, the team is in Atlanta this coming weekend, so I'll be in another state, Whoa. like two states in eight days. It's stupid. I know. That's uh, that's exciting for you, and a disappointment to all the states you'll be visiting. But uh, I guess you're, I guess you're <laughs> out there again. We should warn our two fans that you're on the road in case they they accidentally run into you. I had a Twitter fan from Louisville show up and uh, he ran the camera for me during the game. He just wanted to come down and meet me. You are the worst. And you, as soon as he messaged you that he was there, you, you hit him up for that favor, didn't you? <laughs> so, uh, you tried to... I'll tell you a little more about the day off air. You tried... <laughs> Let's just say it was not a diverse crowd except for me and him. <laughs> You uh, you tried to rope me into the same thing back when you were calling uh, arena football. Oh, you'll you'll do it. Yeah, you'll do Will it I? this year. The yes, I thought at first COVID suspended the season this year, but we will be in Indianapolis next year, and James Breakwell will be part of the broadcast. Team. I thought, and that's the first one I thought. I was like, oh, cool, it'd be cool to be part of a broadcast team and do this with Steve. I did, but then I finally realized I wasn't doing it with Steve. I'd be doing it for Steve. Like I was just doing yeah. some menial task behind the scenes and you were still the face of the whole operation and the voice of it. It's like, oh, I get nothing from this. I gotcha. That's that's the kind of the favor that Steve Olivas pulls in. Uh, uh, so I know a guy that was a Pro Bowl running back in the NFL and I didn't get him cleared to do color with me. Like uh, management is pretty tight on who they allow on Mike. At least they were when we were a startup team. Maybe they'll loosen their restrictions when they find out you're the guy hanging in my bathroom. <laughs> it's all right. I know nothing about sports in general, and I'm sure I would only ruin your ruin whatever you have going on there. I I, I don't know. Maybe I could get you fired. I mean, that would be exciting. But uh, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> <laughs> and fitting. Yes. Finally, bringing our our collaboration full circle. If if one of us can get the other one fired from a day job, I think our our collaboration will have reached its apex. 
<laughs> well, we have reached the apex today, and let's go out on a high note and leave them wanting for more. At least the one person in India and someone in Kenya who enjoys our other show. Not this one, of course. But I'll walk us out of here because we got other things to do. Tune into our other podcast, which we're about to record, with just this much vim and vigor. Ten minutes to save your marriage. Very popular in Uganda. Stay out of Kenya, though. We're only 102. But until then, until we meet again next week for the same round of fun and frivolity, this is Steve, Dr. Steve Olivas for James the Exploding and Short-Wearing Unicorn saying thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and as always, remember, two wrongs can make a right.